By now, you should have a fairly good idea of what a Facebook ad is, how it works and what it looks like. You should also understand the distinct advantages that Facebook advertising has over other forms of advertising online and you should know how to leverage those advantages for your own ends. So there's just one thing left to do and that's to get creating your ads. Okay, I've logged into Facebook and what you do is come up to the top right hand corner and click on the little down arrow that opens this drop down menu and click on the link here that says create adverts. Now of course the first step in creating your advertisement is going to be to define the goal or the objective for your campaign. So once you've clicked on the create adverts link it's going to take you through to this page where you can choose your objective and there are several objectives that you can have. You can either boost your posts, promote your page, send people to your website, increase conversions on your website, you can get installs of your app, increase engagement of your app, reach people near your business, raise attendance at your event, get people to claim your offer, and get video views. Now seeing as our goal is to increase website conversions what we're going to do is click here increase conversions on your website and it says here send people to your website to take a specific action such as signing up for a newsletter use a pixel to measure your conversions now they call it a pixel but actually it's a line of code that you're going to need to enter into your website and if you're familiar with other applications like Google Analytics or things like that then you'll be familiar with how to do this. Let's enter a URL to promote and I've just copied and pasted that in from my computer's clipboard and then once that's in click on the carriage return and it then checks it out to make sure that it's a genuine website and then you have to get the details for the conversion tracking pixel which as it says is a small piece of code that lets you keep track of conversions such as purchases and signups on your website and then you want to decide what type of conversion you want to measure you can choose a category and let's say we want to have either checkouts, registrations, leads, key page views, as to basket or other website conversions. And I'm going to have leads for this demonstration. Then you give it a name and let's call it alien leads. you check this checkbox that says I agree to the terms of service and then click the button here create pixel and it takes you through to this page which rather confusingly looks like an error page but actually isn't but it says here your advert will not be optimized for conversions because your conversion tracking pixel isn't working correctly check your conversion tracking pixel and refresh or try verifying the pixel again well seeing as they haven't given you the pixel yet this is rather confusing so it says how would you like to verify your conversion tracking pixel and you've got two options you can either add the pixel yourself to your website or someone else will add the pixel to my website I'm going to check this radio button it says I can add the pixel and if I scroll down a bit you can see we've got the conversion tracking pixel which as you can see is quite a lot of code which you need to copy and paste between the head tags on your page and also if I scroll down a bit further it says here to include a monetary value for each conversion edit the code to assign a conversion value using the value and currency fields okay right what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pause the video while I copy and paste this into my website 
Okay, I've done that now, so all I need to do is click here on the button that says continue. Okay, it takes me through to here and you can see that it has verified that that information is correct. And it's also assigning it a campaign name, which is basically the URL and the fact that we're looking for website conversions. Okay, let's start entering some of the other information in. Let's just scroll down a bit. The first thing that they want you to do is to enter your account information. You enter your account country, your currency, and your time zone. And this is going to be picked up from your IP address and you can change it if you want. I'm in the UK and my currency is pound sterling and I'm in London so that's the time zone but you can change it as well so for example you can select a different country from the pop-up menu here so you can say be in the United States or the United Arab Emirates or any other country in the list here and likewise you can change the currency so for example you can have all these other different currencies here and you can of course have the US dollar if you scroll right down. I'm going to leave these at the default settings. Let's just show you the advanced options. You can have the advert account name as well. The next step is targeting your audience. We've already touched on this a fair amount but to recap this is the process of whittling down the people who will actually see your ad so that you're directly targeting the people who are most likely to buy. This is easy to understand in theory, but when you come down to it, you'll find that you actually have a number of choices and you need to think carefully about what you select for each one. To start with, you're going to choose demographic targeting, which means looking at the precise demographic. To help you with this, try to imagine your ideal customer. Ask yourself, who is most likely to want to buy your product? How old are they? Where do they live? Are they male or female? Write up a profile for them and imagine they're a real person. Okay, so once you've got together all that information about who your ideal customer is, the next step is to start entering it in here on Facebook. And what you can do is you can target by location. And the ability to target your audience by geography is one of the most powerful features of Facebook advertising. And it's something that you should use in a big way. Of course, the main types of business to benefit from this aspect will be the high street stores, restaurants and other businesses that can only be used in person. E-commerce stores can sell to anyone in the world, but if you're a hairdresser, you'll only be able to work with customers in your area code. As such, why would you want to advertise to anyone else? Another big advantage of targeting by location is that it allows you to reduce the competition. If you're advertising to everyone on Facebook, then that means you'll be competing with a ton of other global brands. If you specifically focus on one area though, then you'll become a big fish in a small pond and your ads will be more likely to show up for a lower cost per click. For this reason, some companies will even decide to take a local approach to their advertising even if they can ship internationally. This way, they can focus on one area and become well known for that particular audience and then branch out later once they already have a strong foothold with that proportion of the market. Now, the great thing about targeting by location this way as well is that you can choose the area you want to target and then you can also choose how large you want the radius to be. How far are people likely to travel for your service? How far do you want to deliver? And how niche do you want to be? Now let's say I want to take that approach, so I'm going to have the United Kingdom, but I'm only going to have people in London. So let's just type that in. And I have London, England, United Kingdom. And you'll see that it's showing the audience now as being defined and the potential reach 7.5 million people. 
but I can actually narrow this down even further if we just look down here you can see it's got everyone in this location but I could have people who live in this location people who are recently in this location or people traveling to this location and this can come in handy if say you've got a hotel or something but for this demonstration let's choose people who live in this location and once again you can see it's now narrowing the potential reach down to 7.3 million people now there are a ton of other demographics that you can use on top of location for precisely targeting your audience I suppose the two obvious ones are age and gender. Here you can think about the age of your most typical customer as well as their gender and then advertise to them directly. But bear in mind too that you might think about this differently if you have different goals. For instance, you might not be so interested in saying to your typical buyer, but may instead want to increase the awareness in your other demographics in order to expand your audience. In this case, your question may be, how can we better appeal to the X demographic? Or which demographic are we missing out on? You may specifically decide to target elderly customers or women and create an ad campaign based around this intention, for example. Okay, let's think about who is going to be interested in uh, our video game. Well, I would say, just like with the Facebook page, they're going to be mostly male. and they're going to be mostly young, so let's say between 18 and 30. And let's say we're interested in people who speak English. And we'll say English UK. Now, Facebook goes a lot deeper than just letting you target by age, gender, and language, though. At the same time, you can also target your audience by a lot more specific criteria, and this can be a very powerful tool. Let me just scroll down a bit here so we can have some room. If you click here on the More Demographics button, you can target people uh, by other specific options, for example, relationships, education, their work, ethnic affinity, generation, parents, and you can target all parents or just mothers in some areas. Um, you can have politics in the US and life events and a whole lot more. And this is an incredibly powerful tool because it means you can target a very specific kind of customer. And this is particularly useful, uh, for instance, if you want to target by job title. This will allow you to sell tools that might be particularly useful for certain careers, but at the same time, it gives you the ability to reach the decision makers for companies. Now, this means you can target executives and managers and use this to sell B2B services. You know, targeting by job title also gives you a relatively good indication of salary, and you can use this to ensure you're reaching people who can afford what you're selling. Note though that as you do this, there is a fine line to be walked. And this is the line between being highly specific about who you're targeting versus still reaching a broad audience. Of course, you don't want such strict criteria that only one person in the world is likely to see your ad. Let's just close this so you can see the rest here. Then you've got interests. And Another way that you can target your Facebook ads is by interest. And again, this is immensely powerful. Of course, when you target by interest, that means you pick up only people who've actually expressed some interest in what you're selling. Are you selling an album? Is it electronic dance music? Then look for Facebook users who've listed electronic dance music or EDM as their interest. Are you selling tennis rackets? Then look for someone with an interest in tennis.
Again, you should write the profile of your average customer. You know, what are their hobbies and interests? What do they spend their weekends doing? You know, what are their goals and ambitions? Interest also gives you some other interesting possibilities. For instance, you can look for users that are fans of a competitor's product. You know, this is a little sneaky perhaps, but it's also genius because if they bought their product, chances are they'll be interested in yours. Now, think about what interest might lead to an interest for your product. For instance, if someone is interested in virtual reality, they might also be interested in drones, seeing as they're both examples of quite advanced technologies. It's worth doing a little research before you start filling out this section. Again, you don't want to go for obscure interests that no one actually has. So look around some profiles and see what broad categories of interests come up often. When choosing interests, Facebook also gives you the option to click Browse. And from here, you can look through the suggestions that they have to offer. So let's do that now. Click here on Browse. And you can see there's all these different categories that you can choose from all these different ones. So let's look at hobbies and activities. And you have all hobbies. Or you can click here where it says suggestions. Let's click on that. And you've got, um, and as you can see, you can now save the audiences to use again later. So let's just shut that annoying nag screen. Okay, back to suggestions. And let's just take a look. Um, hmm. All sorts of ones here. Um, but there doesn't seem to be a one for video games. Right. So let's leave it at all hobbies and activities. And then you've got behaviors. People aren't always entirely honest about their interests. You know, if a guy is interested in My Little Pony, he may well not include that on his Facebook page. What's more, you may have forgotten to remove rock climbing from your list of interests, even though you haven't done it for 10 years. And anyway, just because you're interested in playing the drums, well, that doesn't mean that you can, and it doesn't mean that you've actually bought a drumstick. Now, the point I'm getting to here is that interests, although useful, can be misleading. And that's why Facebook also offers the ability to look at behaviors. Behaviors include things like purchase history, intent, engagement, and more. This is even advanced enough to allow you to target, for instance, people who are just about to go on holiday and who are currently browsing flights. This might be incredibly useful, for instance, if you run a hotel and you want to find people who are in the market for somewhere to stay. So let's just browse behaviors. And let's look here on digital activities. And you can see we've got one for console gamers. So let's click on that. Let's just scroll down here a bit more because the next one is connections. And connections is another very interesting option that this time allows you to target people based on their connections or lack thereof to you. So for example, you could use this method to target people who are friends of your Facebook fans or who aren't yet fans of your page. One potential use of this is that it lets you try to expand your audience and gain new likes for your pages from people who may be more inclined to like them. This can also be an interesting way to potentially sell your items as gifts. For example, if you sell branded t-shirts and your fans buy from you regularly, then marketing to their friends around Christmas you know, might not be a bad strategy. Another useful advantage of marketing to people's friends is that it means you have social proof. In other words, the people seeing your page will see that their friends like you and as such, they'll be more inclined to want to buy from you, you know, thinking your products must be good. As you can see, each of these different settings has a clear and obvious use as well as numerous others. So let's look at the connections here. Let's look at Facebook pages. 
and you can have this one here friends of people who like your page and there we go and then you can add the page in here let's just copy and paste that from my computer's clipboard now you need to set your budget and as I said in an earlier video the more you spend the more your ad is going to be shown and they're going to set a recommended daily budget you want to set this at a reasonable amount and you're going to need to do some experimenting to see how much works for you and of course a lot of that's going to be dependent on how much you can afford obviously now you can have two options you can run your advert set continuously start a day or you can set a start and end date and you can also it comes to your budget you can have either a daily budget or a lifetime budget with a lifetime budget you enter the maximum that you want to spend in this box and then when all that's gone they will stop your ad being shown let me just show you the advanced options here because Facebook can be a bit sneaky here you're optimizing for website conversions but as it says your bid is optimized to get more conversions to your website you'll be charged each time your advert is served now obviously Facebook are in business to make money so you're going to be charged every time your ad is shown once your ad has been proven and once you know that it works properly and I'll talk about that in a later video then you might want to do this but for the moment you want to have it optimized for clicks and this is cost per click or pay per click obviously they'd rather you didn't do that which is why they're saying for most advertisers optimizing for your objective usually performs better but I would say to begin with you want to optimize it for clicks and that way if your advert is a dud then you're not going to be charged I'm going to set a slightly higher budget let's say I want to charge a daily budget of £13.50 I'm going to have it run continuously starting today I'm going to get more clicks at the best price and what will happen here is Facebook will determine the price that I get charged or you can click this radio button here and you can set the maximum price that, that you want to pay it's up to you and then you have the advert scheduling Let's scroll down a bit here you click on more adverts you can run the advert all the time or you can run the advert on a schedule and this only works with lifetime budgets let me just put this back to lifetime budgets so that you can see here let's say we have a hundred and thirty pound lifetime budget let me make that a a lifetime budget and we can schedule it for start and end so it'll run for a month let's just scroll down a bit here run it on a schedule and you can see you can have the precise days and times when you want these ads to show so for example if you are targeting gamers then you'd want to just have your ads showing in the evenings and at weekends when they're likely to be home and playing video games so you want you know teenagers after school or at, at weekends that sort of thing so you can just simply click and schedule your hours in here and we'll continue this video